Hello and welcome to Lightworks. In this tutorial we're going to have a look at some of the effect panel updates in Lightworks version 12. On the timeline here I'm building up a four layer video composite. Layers V1, V2 and V3 are the picture in pictures you'll see on the side. I use the DVE presets to quickly position those top right, center right and bottom right. Layer V4 represents the larger picture you see on the left hand side of the edit monitor. I'm going to work on V4. I'd like to reposition that frame and crop it slightly. You'll now notice at the top of the effects panel that there's tabs for the effects applied to each video track. Here I can see V1, V2, V3 and V4. I've applied the DVE to V4 but haven't made any adjustments as yet. Now when you add effects and expand them we've kept some groups collapsed to keep things tidier. The general look of the effects panel has been cleaned up, making it easier to make adjustments. Let's do some work on video 4. I'm going to move the horizontal position across. I can use the mouse wheel to move the parameter slider. I'd like to zoom in on the image a little bit and I know the value I want is minus 0.92 just so we can make the subject a bit more central and frame him a little bit better. Moving on to the crop parameters I'm going to crop the right hand edge so we can separate all the pictures with a little black border. I'm going to crop the top and the bottom of that frame as well. I know my value for the top 15.61 press enter and to move to the next field I can just press the tab key Using shift and tab you can go backwards and just pressing tab we can step through those fields. I know our bottom crop is 39.42, press enter. So that's done, I'm happy with that. Let's do some colour work on the main image and look at the changes to the colour correction modules. I'd like to make some colour changes but I don't want to affect the reflection in the goggles. I want to isolate that section from any changes. Additionally I want to isolate the face and try and keep the flesh tones as natural as possible but also allow us to make any adjustments there independent of everything else. To achieve that I'm going to use the selective color correction module. The selective correction and the color correction module have had an overhaul. Now you'll find the color wheels, RGB, HSV and curves all combined into one panel to make achieving great color looks even easier than ever. You can now apply effects from the add effects panel to the effects settings panel simply by dragging and dropping. Let's take the selective corrector and drag and drop and target V4. I'm just going to remove that colour effect by clicking the X. If you prefer, you can access the same menu that you get when adding effects on segments on the timeline by right clicking, choosing Add, Effect, Selective Correction. Here you can now see the tabs updates, black, grey and white point values, main shadows, mids and highlights, colour wheels, now each one of these comes with a curve where you can define the luminance ranges that are affected by each wheel. You can add further points on here if you wish. In the shadows and in the highlights as well. This area of the curve is blacks, this area in the middle is midtones, and this area at the top is highlights. You'll also find RGB settings for gamma, contrast, brightness and gain. You'll find the HSV hue, saturation and value parameters and also the curves for RGB or individual RGB channels and luminance values. Please note that you will no longer find RGB and HSV as individual modules in your video colour category in the effects panel. They'll always be accessed via the colour correction or the selective correction module. At the top of the selective correction panel we have region 1, region 2 region 3 and region 4. We're going to choose the regions we want to correct. Let's start with region 1. So we're going to isolate the ski goggles. Turn on the region, choose the colour picker and click on the area you wish to isolate. This has now been selected and you'll notice that the hue, saturation and luminance graphs have modified themselves. To see that region specifically you need to select the reveal checkbox. The area that will take the colour changes is revealed in white. The dark band you can see reflected at the top of the goggles is the sky. 
I'm going to select the reflection of the ground in this mask. You also notice that the boulders on the ski slope are not included in the selection mask. When we come to make the colour adjustments of everything outside the ski mask, we'll see that this band of sky at the top of the mask will follow the adjustments we're going to make. What we need to do is make a nice clean area of white on the goggles first of all. To do that, I'm going to make some adjustments to these three parameters, hue, saturation and luminance. Let's start with hue. I'm going to take the boundaries of this edge range, click in the middle and expand that. You can see the result that's having. To fade that range through additional colours, think of it as edge smoothing. Click on the bottom points and drag. to try and increase that range. So we need to try and achieve the best result we can from each adjustment. If you click in the middle here, you can roll the colour space left and right. OK, that's alright for the colour range. Next, let's move on to saturation. If I take this left-hand edge of the saturation graph and drag it to the left, I'll be able to open up the range a bit further. We click in the middle, see if we can improve the results. And finally, let's work on the luminance values. Again, I'm going to click on the left hand edge and expand that range. You can see we're starting to affect areas of the face, which I don't really want. So I'm going to try and be careful to close that down. Also, working further, using the bottom edges, we can try and increase the edge smoothing. Of course, the results you'll get depend on the type of image you've got, but the idea is, is to try and balance the best results from these three parameters. The next thing I want to do is invert this region Remember, we want to keep the goggles untouched as much as possible to keep that nice orange glow on them and to keep the reflections natural. Next, select Invert. Now, you can see the goggles area is going to remain untouched and everything that's white is going to take the colour correction from the settings we make on the rest of the panel. I'm going to turn off the reveal and return to making some changes in the image. The first thing I'm going to do is drop down the saturation. I'm going to lose some of the warmth of that background. The gamma, I'm going to take down to about 0 0.096. I'm going to just push the contrast a bit as well. Let's make some changes to the HSV values. You can see now, as I scan through the hues, we're starting to work with some tinting going on in the background as we go through the colour spaces. I'm going to give the background a slightly green tint. That's OK. I'm going to leave the saturation flat, change the value, See if we can go really dark there. And just change that value to about there, minus 2. I'm going to take the saturation here, go to about minus 16, and on the value, go to about plus 20. You can see that effect it's having. Going to the Curves tab, I'm just going to drop in a contrast S curve on the luminance channel. Select that, add a point down here in the blacks at a point up here in the highlights region. I'm going to pull down the black area. So this is just a basic contrast curve. And lift up the highlights. To give some punch to the picture. Let's have a quick look in the RGB values, see if there's any settings we want to make additionally. Just adjust these to taste. OK, that's not too bad. You can see our correction has affected the flesh tones here. Let's isolate those so we can work on them independently of everything. So we're going to go to Selective Correction, Region Number 2. I'm just going to turn off channel 1 for a moment. 
turn on channel 2, select the color picker, straight to the cheek, click that and select reveal. We want to try and make that area as clean as possible. We've got some areas here, the lips and around the jaw, which still require some work. Again, same process. Click the color boundaries. We don't want anything going into the mask. So I'm going to expand that. Add a slope to smooth through the color edges. Want to saturation, check one edge. Don't want anything going into the mask there, so do the best we can. And check the left hand edge. And down to luminance, check each edge. And that's doing it there. So we've got lots of cheek there. We want to make this flat white. So push that open. And on the left hand side, the dark regions. So you may find it helpful at this point to hit invert to check for spill. Just follow the same process as we used in the first selection. Turning off reveal. Let's turn back on our primary correction. Now focusing on channel 2. If I just go down to the saturation and move that, I can now work on the flesh tones independently of all the other correction, which is a much better situation. So I'm just going to warm up the face a little bit, add a touch of contrast, and that's a better result. On our goggles mask, we do have some spill over onto the goggle strap, which are the same colours, but that's quite nice, so we leave that as is. Run that through. And perhaps on top of all of this, we could put a gradient vignette to the vignette and crop preset section. Ellipse vignette. Just drag and drop that straight down to the panel. And that's giving it another layer of interest. When you're working with the effects parameters, if you make some changes you're not happy with, you can reset the whole effect to its default settings, or you can reset one parameter at a time. For example, let's modify the saturation and the gamma levels on the primary correction. If you right click on the panel you'll see under each effect I can reset any of those parameters I've changed one by one. Let's just go and reset that saturation. You see the slide has returned to zero. Of course you can reset all I'm going to minimize the correction for the moment. In that right click panel you also have the option to duplicate an effect or duplicate it in its default state. If I wanted to add another correction layer on top of all of this I could duplicate the default of the selective correction. Now selective correction number two has arrived in our effects stack. So with this we can select another region and add some global changes on top of everything. The effect setting panel and the keyframe panel have now been combined together. To enable keyframing any effects parameters simply turn on the icon beside the parameter slider. The keyframe panel is revealed by clicking the sliders icon on the top right. Now we can see saturation, gamma, contrast, brightness and gain keyframe graphs. To add keyframes Simply click the graph and make the adjustment. The effect settings panel has a shortcut to show and hide it. That new shortcut is function key 6 on your keyboard. Hide, show. If you're coming from earlier versions of Lightworks, you need to re-import your Lightworks preferences file. To do this, go to your toolbar, choose editor preferences at the bottom, press import and choose the lightworks.prefs file. Press OK. That shortcut's now enabled. Enjoy the new effects enhancements in Lightworks 12. We hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching.